I figure it's high time, man. We gotta get to something. It's in my wheelhouse. And actually, we had a viewer actually request this, and that yes. was... How to make a YouTube profile picture. Stay tuned. Hey, I'm Dale. And I'm Walt. And this is Live Streaming Tech, and if you wanna learn more about live streaming online, including places like YouTube, Facebook, DLive, Twitch, and beyond, then, Make sure you click that subscribe button and turn that bell notification on so you don't miss a single video. All right, I said this is my wheelhouse, man. Uh, YouTube, this is pretty much where I've pretty much made a living. And uh, now we're starting to kind of expand out in live streaming tech, so it seems only natural that we start to break ground. And what are we gonna be doing today, man? Well, we're gonna show you how to create. Uh, matter of fact, Dale has a free template that you can download down below in the description. And you could follow along actually uh, through this little walkthrough. He's gonna show you how to create a YouTube profile pic. Let's take it away, screen wipe. Okay, to make the YouTube profile picture, we're gonna be using the open source software called GIMP. If you don't have that already, it's free. You can go over to gimp.org slash downloads and you can get it all installed. This works for PC and Mac. I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna set you up with the template here towards the end of the video. So um, we're gonna go ahead and double click right here and it's gonna open up this template. Now, the nice thing is you're gonna see it's a square format, 800 by 800 pixels, and I've actually already got things set up. Over here on the right-hand side, if you just click the drop-down menu, you'll see there's two different layers. The reason I put these together is, you of course wanna make sure you fit within the 800 by 800 specs, but then there's also this circular image, because in most instances, like on mobile and desktop, they only show this circular area to the people. So you wanna make sure all of the things that you want available are right in the confines of this. So we're just gonna kind of leave this as is. So uh, for the sake of just us keeping things simple, I'm just gonna be putting together a you know, very simple profile pic. This is up to you how fancy you want to get. I'm gonna go ahead and drag and drop an image in here. And let's just have a little bit of fun with this. We're gonna drag and drop that in here. All right, I'm gonna press my control key and then use the scroll wheel to kind of scroll on out. You can also use the subtraction key as well as the plus key. So it's not too bad. I will probably mess with the coloring here in just a few minutes. So there we go. We've got me inside the shot and now let's go ahead and we're gonna drop my brother into the shot. Drag and drop. All right, we're just gonna kind of move them here. Now, i um, thinking we'll probably put him in the background, so we're just gonna go ahead and move him back. Okay, not too bad. Let's use the resize tool. We're gonna click on him, and we're just gonna kind of make him just a little smaller. Let's scroll out just a bit. There we go. Scale. Okay, so we're not quite fitting in there like we should. That's okay, I'm just gonna resize it until I get it just about right. Select my guy. So maybe what we'll do is we'll put me in the background. We'll move him towards the foreground. Let me go ahead and finish that resizing job I was working on. You can see I just grab right in the middle and we're just gonna move it right over there. And so you can see we're kind of keeping it right around that circle. Okay, and we're just gonna hit scale. Scales it right in place. Okay, so not too bad. Let's take, and I'm gonna use the rotate tool. We're gonna hit my brother here and we're gonna go ahead and grab him. Just kind of just tilt just a little bit. Rotate. Let's get the move tool. And we're gonna move him back over so we make sure he stays inside the circle somewhat. And then, you know what we're gonna do is we're gonna tilt me just a little bit here. We're gonna use the rotate tool. Again, click on it. We're just gonna rotate it just a bit. And not too bad. Okay, so we're not quite done yet. I wanna go ahead and grab a background. By the way, we're gonna set you up with the free image resources guide. Stick around to the end. Again, I'm gonna send you a link to get all of these resources. I'm gonna drag and drop this in. I wanna move this down a few levels, so we're just gonna move it down, click it down, there we go. 
This is not too bad for background. I'm not angry at it. Kind of draws our attention right into the middle. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of shut this off for just a moment. Okay, and then we're just going to turn it back on by pressing Control Z. We just take this, we can click, and we can move this wherever we wish. I kind of like it centered though. This looks pretty good. You'll notice we have guides going in the middle, vertically and horizontally. All right, so now let's take the square tool, the rectangle tool, excuse me, and we're gonna click and drag it right here on the outside. You know, if anything, let's make it just a little bit fatter. Good, and now there's a purpose why I'm gonna do this. We're gonna frame us out just a little bit. All right, let's add a transparent layer, okay? And I'm going to invert the selection by pressing Control I. If you're using Mac, you're going to use Command. Now we're going to press Control and period to fill it with background color. You'll notice I have the background colors gray and black right now. We can switch it black to black and white here. So let's do it for foreground. We're going to press Control and comma. If we wanted to fill it with the background color, we'd press Control and period and it would fill it up. We're going to go ahead and use it right here like this. Control, Shift, and A deselects our options. So you can see it's framed out. It's not quite what I'm looking for. We're going to go Filters, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and I don't know, let's see what 50 looks like. Hmm, that's not too bad. That might be a little too strong. Let's see what 15 looks like. Ah, there we go. See, that's more like it. Okay, so we've got this shadow here. Let's go ahead and double it up by just duplicating it. Nice, I like that. Let's try it one more time. Let's see how that looks. Ooh, that might be too dark. So I'm gonna press Control Z to undo. We can right click on that top layer and then merge it down and then this one layer here. Keep in mind, if you wanna rename your layer so you know what it is later on, all you gotta do is double click the, the word and then put down shadow in this instance. It would probably help me remember and I press enter. Okay, so now we've got all these layers all done. The big issue though is, how does this look? Let's make sure we get the circle up here. So the, the issue I'm gonna see right now is the fact that there is going to be like the black up here and the black on the sides. You won't be able to see it on the bottom. So it's gonna kinda look weird. So this might not work out in our favor. We could leave it as is, but you know what? That's just not my style. We're gonna go ahead and shut off this layer and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move this down a little further. Let's grab the circle tool and we're going to go ahead and click and then drag from one corner to the next. And as soon as you let go, you should be able to just kind of move right here by the tabs. You can see it's kind of circling right around here. Now I'm going to right click. Well, first I want to go ahead and add a transparent layer. We're going to hit OK. Now I'm going to right click and then I'll go over to edit, stroke selection. I'm thinking maybe 12 pixels. We'll see how this looks. This is going to fill this with the foreground color, the black color here and hit stroke. Okay, not bad, not bad. Not feeling this all the way. So you know what? We're going to go ahead and use that last trick I showed you guys. And we're going to hit control I to invert our selection and then let's go ahead and let's fill it with black color. Here, we're gonna hit Control, period. Ooh, look at that. Now this might actually work. I'm gonna press Control, Shift, A to deselect it. We're going back up here, since we already used Gaussian Blur last as an effect, we can just repeat the Gaussian Blur. Ah, here we go. That might be a little bit better. I don't know, what do you think? We can play around with this till the cows come home, but ultimately at the end of the day, we only know until we try it. So I'm gonna go ahead and click and drag. I'm gonna do one more thing. You know, let's put it just a little further inside. Grabbing the tabs, moving it on in. All right, so remember the little trick I was just doing not too long before here? We're gonna hit transparent layer, okay. Let's switch our foreground color. We're gonna right click, edit, stroke selection, and 12 seemed kind of big, but I'm feeling rebellious. Let's go ahead and do it again. Okay, not bad. Control Shift A will deselect it. You can kind of see it in the background. It's not terrible, 
not hating it entirely, what we're going to do is we're going to have some fun with this. We can probably just drop just a little bit of texture in this. You can find textures in our free images resources guide when you go to one of these websites. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit right click and we're going to go ahead and add layer mask. OK and add it. All right, so we don't see anything. I left it as white. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to find an image. We're going to skip forward. OK, so let's say I've got my image. We're going to hit control N. It doesn't matter the size of the canvas. Let's drag and drop the image over onto our surface. Now this particular image is pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to shrink it down just a little bit. And I'm just going to go ahead and use a scale tool. And let's get the smaller side at 800. Scale. Alignment tool will get it right in place. You're going to see what I'm doing here in just a moment. It's a lot of fun. We're going to go into colors, desaturate. We're going to select desaturate again. I don't worry about any of this. We're going to hit OK. All right now we've got it to where it pulls all of the color out. It's just black and white. It's grayscale. So the next thing I'm going to do is we're going to go ahead and kick up the contrast. So that way everything's a little bit more precise. I'm going to make it just a bit brighter because anything white is going to be preserved. Anything black is going to be pulled out. You're going to see what I mean in just a moment. It's kind of cool. All right, so there we go. We've got it. It kind of has this grainy look to it. Now, I'm going to hit Control C while I'm here. I'm going to go back to my original image. We're going to select that layer mask, Control V to drop it into place. Do you notice it kind of put a little bit of texture to our circle right there? Let's go ahead and we're going to anchor it. Now, I'm going to leave the mask as is. That way, for some reason, I shut it off later on, which I can just do that by right clicking. And I can always just disable layer mask. And you see it disappears. Control Z will undo it. And then what we're going to do is let's select the actual picture itself. And we're going to go ahead and I'm going to just make the opacity just disappear just a little bit. Not too bad. Let's get a bird, bird's eye view. I like it. So this right here is going to be the YouTube image. Let's go ahead and clean up our pictures a bit. I'm going to kick up some saturation and some of the contrast. We're going to go into colors, hue and saturation. I find sometimes when I kick up these images at 20, it works out. You play around with yours and see how they look. I'm going to go into colors again, brightness and contrast. We're going to do it right about 10. There we go. Not bad. Rinse and repeat on this next one. Okay, so now that we have us popping up off the page here, our very next thing we're going to want to do is let's put a little, little bit of a shadow in the background so it makes us jump off of the actual profile pic. So I'm going to right click on his head, alpha to selection. Let's select the circle. We're going to put a transparent layer right above it. We're going to fill it with background color by pressing control period. Now right click on the other image, alpha to selection. We're going to go back to that layer. Control period. Now what we did is we've put a shadow here. Control shift A will deselect. Now if we shut these off, you can see the shadow here. I'm going to go into filters. We're going to go into blur, Gaussian blur. Let's try out 15. Let's see how, see how that looks. Not too bad. Let's see it with our images over top of it. Nothing to write home about, but if we double it up, you can see we popped out just a bit more. I'm going to merge it down by right clicking and pressing merge down. Now, all we need to do is we need to see about saving this. So we're going to hit File, Save As, YouTube Profile Pick, LST. All right. Now, this is just GIMP readable right now. We need to export this as a PNG or a JPEG. I'm going to hit Control Shift E to export. All right. And now I'm going to go ahead, it's in PNG. Perfect. We're going to hit Export. Leave all this here so you may want to pause your video and make sure all your settings are right and hit export. Now your file is ready to upload to your YouTube channel. Okay, so if you want to get your hands on this template for the YouTube profile picture, you're going to head over to livestreamingtech.site slash YouTube template. If you go over to this video over here, we're going to show you how to live stream over on YouTube. Super, super simple. And also, if you're super rebellious, go over and check out this video. I, you know, that's only if you're rebellious. See you there.